cloud downloading the distribution installer, you can invoke the installation process by typing the command as defined at the bottom of the output page on the factory web wizard. The first step in the installation process is everyone's favorite, accepting the terms of the EULA. In this case, however, you'll find that our terms are far less ominous than those guys offering commercial Linux distribution. Accepting the terms will enable us to complete the installation process. Please note that the distribution installer is fully relocatable. You can choose to either install in the default directory root timesys or pick a directory of your own. As defined earlier, the installer will complete an installation for the full chain, kernel image, kernel sources, and the root file system. At this point in the process, you've installed everything required for you to boot your initial Linux platform on your board or initiate application development. That being said, let's take a moment to walk through the directory structure that was created as a part of the installation process. As you can see, a directory called OMAP3530 Zoom was created for your board. Included within that directory, you'll see the kernel source directory, root file system directory, full chain directory, and builder directory, which includes the desktop factory build engine. Taking a quick look within the toolchain directory will reveal that the desktop factory utilizes a standard GNU-based structure. You can also see that the desktop factory for OMAP comes complete with an ARMv7 toolchain, enabling you to take advantage of all the latest instructions offered on the Cortex-A8 architecture. Drilling down further in the bin reveals that we offer a very full-featured, complete Rust toolchain, including GCC, GDB, and strip utilities. Stepping back to the kernel source directory will reveal that we offer a very standard kernel directory structure. Please note there's no time to specific or hidden subdirectories. You'll see the same approach with the root file system directory. Now it's time to uncompress and invoke the desktop factory. The initial work order created with the factory web wizard can now be fully configured on the desktop using simple make menu config. As you can see, this approach will enable you to configure the target, the tool chain, the Linux platform, and the build configuration. Within the target architecture, you can see the work order and resulting Linux platform has been pre-configured to support the Logic OMAP 353 Zoom Kit and the Cortex A8 architecture. As displayed, you also have the ability to override any of the default configurations of our full featured toolchain, including GCC and GDB and any potential flag settings. Scrolling down further, we'll reveal any tools that are included with the Linux Link Toolbox for this processor and associated development kit. Now let's take a look at the actual Linux platform listed under Target Software. As previously discussed, this Linux platform comes complete with a fully configured 2622 Linux kernel. If required for your project, you can upgrade to a more recent version of the kernel. We highly recommend that you stick with a 2622 kernel to maintain alignment with Times' provided patches and the TI provided kernel. As you can see, the desktop factory is also pre-configured to fetch kernel sources straight from the Times' repository, including all patches and configurations. Now let's take a look at the root file system listed under software packages. 
As you can see, all packages are grouped by application, just as on the website with the factory web wizard. Any packages specified by your work order have already been pre-selected. You can select any package to learn more about it and its associated sources. You can also configure select packages using the menu config interface. You can further customize your root file system on the desktop by selecting any of the displayed packages. In this case, we're going to select WebKit to add a web browser to our basic Linux platform. Now that our root file system is complete, let's take a quick look at the advanced build configuration. As you can see, the Desktop Factory build engine is set by default to pull all associated sources from the TimeSys repository. However, this default configuration can be overwritten to fetch sources from any of a variety of locations as required by your project. Having further customized the Linux platform on the desktop, we are now prompted to save the work order. Once saved, we can easily rebuild from source with Make. 